10 a.m. here in the sanctuary, but the Wednesday evening prayer is going to be canceled this uh, this week. We have an opportunity at the uh, at the Winchester School. They're having a uh, a big play, <coughs> and it's um, geared towards uh, drugs and, and alcohol and those types of things to for the kids to be more more away from it. And they have asked us if we would like to set up a booth or a table to uh, uh, greet people as they go in and when they, when they leave, uh, leave the play and let people know about the resources that Grace Christian Fellowship has in regards to uh, drug and alcohol uh, treatment. And so we had this opportunity to, to give, uh, give out information. So I'm going to be there. Uh, I contacted Teen Challenge, and they haven't got back to me yet, but I'm hoping that they're going to be with us at, at our table as well. And if you would like to join me, then please feel free, let me know after the service, and we'll talk about it. Uh, baby bottle blessing. Get your bottles. We still have some bottles. If you have not picked up a bottle to put spare change in, then please pick it up and bring it back full of change uh, on Father's Day, where we will receive that offering. Last year we, we, we uh, raised, I think it was about $775 in spare change from Grace Christian Fellowship for the Pregnancy Resource Center of the Nanak Region. So if you have not got your baby bottle yet, please pick one up. They're in the, in the uh, fellowship hall. Men's Ministry, Wednesday, June 6, 7 p.m. The Heart of the Man is the, is the last series of A Man and His Story. So we'll be completing that one on June 6 at 7 p.m. And uh, so, guys, <clears throat> come, grab a, grab a friend, and bring them along with you. Uh, and then after the service today, yes, Daddy? Uh, there won't be any women's uh, leaving that night because we'll be away for the men's. Right. What? The we women won't be meeting at our house. Oh, oh, okay. Read your bullet good. <laughs> <laughs> I used to write it. I don't anymore. Do the bullet Okay. When that, yeah, thank you, Kathy. Yeah. Don't mind me. I had a senior moment. Um, yeah, when the men's ministry on June 6th, there will not be a meeting for the women at our house. Because on June 6th, Kathy and I are going to be gone. You can be praying for us. We're leaving June 4th. And we're going down to Pennsylvania on a camper. But we're going down to a pastor's conference down there that's put on by Times Square Church. And uh, Pastor Carter Cullen <coughs> and uh, Gary Wilkerson is going to be there. And we went to it last year. It was very powerful. And we had the opportunity to go again this year. So we're going. And we're going to be gone for about a week and a half. And uh, so uh, that Wednesday night, there won't be anybody at our house. If you want to come over, you can come on over and hang out outside because the door will be locked. <laughs> but anyways... Uh, be praying for us for that. Uh, also, at the end of the service today, uh, we could use some help in uh, getting chairs out of the out of the uh, shed out back. Uh, we have uh, uh, metal chairs that we need to get them out and set them up, uh, wipe them down and clean them off and set them up uh, in the sanctuary because of Joe Wood's uh, funeral that's going to be here this afternoon at 2 o'clock. Uh, it's going to be... You don't know anything about the Woods slash Winchester family. It's huge. And this place is going to be jam-packed this afternoon for that and for the reception. So we could use some hands, hands uh, some help in getting those chairs out and cleaned off and, and set up. Uh, Jeff, you said you were going to do that. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say I'm going to tap Jeff the little head tap. Thank you, Jeff. Isn't it fun to be volunteered? <laughs> Anyway, that's all I got for announcements, uh, except that, you know, later on in, in the service, we will we'll be praying for the, uh, for Ivan Wood and, and for the whole uh, Woods and Winchester family. Um, they're in shock. still are. And it's just a difficult thing all the way around. But we get the opportunity this afternoon to honor Joe and his life and to glorify our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Looking through scripture, and I think the timing was right on this. Uh, I'm going to 
Romans 12, uh, verses 9 to 13. Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love. In honor, giving preference to one another. Not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoice, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer, distributing to the needs of the saints, given to hospitality. Pray, please, bow the head and join me in prayer this morning. Dear Lord, uh, we're just uh, in awe of your presence. Thank you for being here. I know you are, you're everywhere you need to be, touching your lost souls, touching souls that edify one another up, as we need to be all the time. But knowing that you won't forsake us is as awesome as it is. Thank you for always being there when we need you, especially times like this. But we uh, lean on you for the strength that we need. I ask for explanation strength, wisdom on high. It's that asking you to receive. But, uh, but that love, God's love flows throughout the body today, uh, touching the wood family. Uh, just nothing more we can hear. We never do. We're prepared. We have, uh, as you poured out into us, Father God, like a vessel that we are, we're going to pour it back out. Just what we've been taught and we learned some the times like this. And nothing is too difficult. Uh, you still sit up right in, hand the fire. You're everywhere. You're uh, more than we're more than conquerors. We're anointed. We're filled. We've been chosen today for this particular day. And I know, like, even with others coming uh, this afternoon, probably or here, just coming in still before the service is over. Touch each and every one. Continue to anoint our minds, our hearts, as the word goes to all of us. Knowing that pastor, that's my world, knowing his mind, his heart, his tongue, as the word goes through him, like rivers of living water. And we need to receive that, Father, so help us to be open, forget about all the other things that we might be, uh, kind of cloud our minds up, our hearts up with, but if we need to be set free, we need to call on you, and the praise and worship be set free, so we can be set, set free and free of being. So, we need to move on, and we need to be about the Father's business today at that time. For that appointed time, and uh, I know we've we've all gone through this. Uh, we've experienced a lot. We're kind of like uh, the soldiers that we are. We we've, we've been in battle, and we've been very uh, we've conquered a lot of things because of you. Our eyes are on you, Father God, today. Uh, just lead it. You as you're the head of the church, and uh, touch your people this day. And we ask it in your name. Amen. Amen. Stay to worship us this morning.
Yeah. 
may be seated. We uh, got much water here again. I don't know about you, but I can never get tired of that type of people. And we have one person that's going to be baptized this morning. And for those of you who are going to be watching, uh, again, I, I say this every time and always will. We have much water here. We also have a uh, container, of, uh, a tote down here that's got some uh, sweatpants and shirts and stuff in it. So if you have not been water baptized, you need to be. And you can be today. It was uh, something that Jesus did, and if it's good enough for him, it's good enough for me. Amen? Amen. You know, and uh, <clears throat> Jesus came to John the Baptist and, and said to him, we need to fulfill all righteousness. John the Baptist was, uh, he was, he was shocked that the, that the Lord came to him to be one of that time. In fact, he said, you know, it, shouldn't, it should be you baptizing me, not me baptizing you. But that's when Jesus said, we need to fulfill all righteousness. Jesus knew he needed to fulfill that righteousness in his life as a man and as a man of God and as God in the flesh. So John the Baptist permitted him and he permitted John and they went down into the Jordan and, 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 Jesus, and Jesus was baptized and he came back up out of the water. <clears throat> and the Spirit of God the scripture says the Spirit of God came and fell upon him as a dove. And this booming voice from heaven cried out for all to hear, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. This is my son in whom I am well pleased. This morning, the one is being baptized, Lexus. She tunes her ear in, maybe in a spiritual sense, she'll be able to hear the Father, God the Father, say to Lexus, Lexus, well done. Well done, my daughter. Well done. I am pleased in you. Hallelujah. So we're going to go ahead and baptize Lexus. Lexus, why don't you come on up there? <clears throat> I guess her family's coming up too. <laughs> This is a pretty cool family affair, right? <clears throat> yeah. So, Lexus, come on up. No, you come up those stairs. Oh, she hasn't got her glasses on, much you? For her. Right. Why don't you hand me your glasses? They don't need to go first screen. You have received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And you have purposed to live the rest of your life for him. And allow him to live his life through you. Do you want to have a seat? <coughs> Lexus, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, we baptize you. Sit as 
a witness to these things, then you are in covenant with with the person. We are anyway, so we're in covenant with uh, with Lexus because she's received Jesus Christ as her Lord. That makes her my sister, makes me her brother. <laughs> she stuck with me, <laughs> but uh, uh, you know, we are family. And and whether it's small or whether large, whether it's a small church or big church, we're family. And when we st when we stand in witness of these things, then we're also call of God to help these people in their walk with the Lord. Usually when somebody is water baptized, they, they, they're very new to the faith. They've just received, recently received the Lord Jesus as Savior. Uh, that's generally the way it is. And, and, uh, and we need to covenant with them and to help them in their walk with the Lord. Amen? Amen. Now, anybody else? We have much water. Come on up. <laughs> Been there, done that, right? Yeah. Um, all right, we're going to pray, and we're going to receive release uh, our children for Children's Church. Father, we do thank you, and we praise you, Lord, that you are God and there is no other. We ask you, Father, that you will minister to our children in Children's Church, that you will minister to us as your big children in, uh, in the sanctuary here. And, Father, that you will have your way with us through your word, in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Children, you're in this for Children's Church. Why don't you stand and greet one another for just a moment?
celebration of life service this afternoon. That makes, I think, number seven uh, funerals that I've done in the last couple of weeks. And uh, some have been, you know, full service. Others have been just the graveside. <clears throat> but I've been almost overwhelmed with all the many people that I've had the opportunity to share the gospel with. But the amount of people with the needs that they have, that you can just sense the, the um, spiritual oppression around them. And it's not just an oppression of, of grief because of the one that they love. But it's an oppression of, the, of, of, of satanic workings in our life. And, and that satanic working is, is there for the specific purpose to keep them away from God. You can, you, can, you can tag all kinds of stuff in there. Struggles with marriages, drugs, alcohol, uh, addictions, um, angers, uh, bitternesses, uh, licentiousness, lustful stuff. All of that stuff. All of that stuff is designed by the enemy for one specific purpose, and that's to keep the person away from God. That's right. And I sometimes stand there and I go, like, what is it with you? Why don't you, and I've almost said it, but it kind of, you have to be careful, you know, you, you gotta, there's, there's ways of saying things. And then there's ways where you can say something you shouldn't have said it that way. But I want to say, why is it? You're, you're, you're hungry for some sort of happiness. You're, 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 you're reaching out for, for love in all of the wrong places. You're trying to find some sort of satisfaction in your life. And all of a sudden, this, all, everything that you do, it just seems like it goes down a sewer drain. And then you come to something like this, totally empty, totally wasted, totally hopeless, and then here's the message of hope, and you keep it at arm's length. I don't get it. I just don't get it, but I have to remember, I did that too. I did not want to have God in my life. I didn't want him to... To, to grab a hold of me because I knew that if I really grabbed a hold of God, he was going to grab a hold of me and he was going to shake, excuse my language, but he was going to shake the hell out of me. You know what I mean? And he still does. He did and he still does. But I just, I, I did not want to be accountable. I didn't want to be accountable to God and I didn't want to be account accountable to anybody else. I wanted to run my life my way. I remember years ago there was a beer commercial. I think it was Narragansett. It said you only go around go around once in life. So grab all the gusto. Yeah. You remember that? Yeah. That, that, that you don't remember that. No, you're too young. That was an old commercial. That was years ago. Many years ago. Grab all the gusto. But what do you say? What that commercial was saying is you. Grab all of the things that is going to waste you away. Grab all of the things that will be, be totally meaningless to you in the course of eternity. Grab everything you can that will destroy you because it will. The thief comes to steal and to kill and to destroy. He doesn't give you anything other than that. It may please you for the moment. It may titillate you for the, for the, for the, uh, for the season. It may, may <coughs> cause you to feel all kinds of, of happiness and all for a season, but it's designed to kill you. It's designed to destroy you, and it is designed to keep you away from God. Right, yeah, right, right. And the church, to some degree, has made coming to God so complicated. That people just, they don't want anything to do with God because they see what's happening with some Christians. People call themselves Christians. 
And over the last couple of weeks, whenever I, I, I come to, to the Lord in prayer, and when I open His Word, it just, like God keeps saying to me, Matthew, it's simple. It's simple. Just keep it simple in your life. So I chose this passage for two verses, really. The first verse, now faith is a substance of things we can do. It's the evidence of the things not seen. It's the very substance. My faith is to be the very substance of what I hope for. What is the greatest thing I should hope for? My eternal peace with the Lord. And that that eternal peace can be, can be uh, um, <clears throat> experienced in my life right here, right now. I don't have to wait to die to have right. peace right. with God. Right. I can have it right now. Yes. It's a substance. It's a substance of what I what I hope for. My life needs to speak of that which I what I truly hope for. Should I be hoping for a Maserati? I wouldn't mind driving one. I know you're ruining one, but I love Maserati. Yeah. Or Lamborghinis. Yeah. Uh, should I really hope for a bigger house, bigger, better, bigger, better? You know what I mean? You know, there's always, that's what this world's a gift. Grab all the guns go. Bigger, better, bigger, better. Bigger, better. <laughs> bigger and better only brings more heart. In. Brings more responsibility. Substance of things hoped for. The evidence of the things not even seen. My faith needs to be the evidence to others. Of that which I don't even see. I don't see God. I can't. Generally can't feel him. I can't hear him with my audible ears. These things. <laughs> the more I get, the less I can hear from these anyways. I've got to rely more on my, my heart to hear God's voice. Faith is a substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. And then verse 6. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. You see how simple this is? But without faith it is impossible to please him. What should my life be but to please my Lord, my Savior? For he who comes to God, me who comes to God... I must believe that he is, not was, not going to be. He is God. There is no other. That sounds so simple. But do I really trust in the is? Because some Christians are no different than the people of this world. And we try to formulate this God into a God that we really feel that we can worship because he does for our choosing and our bidding. <clears throat> because God, God really wouldn't condemn somebody. God, but, well, he doesn't. The scripture says that we condemn ourselves. Our own sin condemns us. But we try to formulate this God and put this God into this spiritual box that we call God and even call Jesus. And we begin to worship this God, and this God that we put into this box and that we have formulated for ourselves is not the God of this book right here, not God of the Bible, and then we worship Him. And you know what that is? That's idol worship. Because that's all idol worship is, is the people that create these gods to, to, to fit their need that is outside of the Scriptures. But we have to have faith in the real God. The God of the scriptures, the God of the Bible. It is impossible to, without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. You know what that word diligently means? Beg your pardon? To keep after, to keep doing it and doing it until you get the result that you want. That you need. 
Yeah. You know what diligently means? I have a bottle of water here. And let's just uh, pretend that I just walked into this building from the Mojave Desert. I've been out in that desert for three weeks with no water. Now, first of all, you know as well as I do, you can't be out in the Mojave Desert for three weeks without water and still live. All right? So that's how dry I am. I come in here just as dry as dry can be. And you hand me a bottle of water. You know what I'm going to I mean, I could be back there and you'd be standing up here and you'd just say, Hey, Pastor, look what I got. You know what I'm going to do? I'm not going to let anybody get in my way. I'm going to make a beeline from there to here, and I'm going to do it diligently. That's what diligently means. That's what that Greek word diligently means, that you're going to go hard after it, and whatever it is, with and you're not going to let anything get in your way. Why? Because you know that that is something that will give you life, and without it, you're going to die. This is the simplicity of the gospel, where we don't just do a bunch of stuff to try and please God. You can't please God without faith. And that faith is not something that, that means that you diligently seek God, that you seek after Him, and you're not going to let anything get in the way of your coming to God when, because you know that He is the only one that gives you life and that more abundantly. There is nothing else that is going to satisfy you in your life. That's what Jesus was saying to Nicodemus. In Nicodemus, in Nicodemus, turn with me to the book of Nicodemus, John, John chapter 3. When Jesus, when Nicodemus came to him, and he came to, Nicodemus, came to Jesus in the middle of the night, why? Because Nicodemus was a religious leader, he was a Pharisee, and he didn't really want to be seen by the others hobnobbing and talking and, and, and being taught by Jesus. But yet there was something about Jesus that, that, that sparked him and convicted him. So he came to Jesus. And he said to Jesus, you know, he says here in John chapter 3, <clears throat> verse 1, it says, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these things that you do unless God is with him. And Jesus answered him, him and said, Most assuredly I say to you, unless you one is born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. <laughs> unless you're born again, you can't see the kingdom of God. How more simple can you get? Only Nicodemus didn't get it. Oh, how can I as an old man? I'm going to just put it in mind. This is the world version. You laugh, I actually have a world translation in my office. Our dear sister Mary Jacobs bought it for me years ago. I told her, I said, I know that there's a world translation. It's spelled W-O-R-R-E-L-L. -L. Mine is A-L-L. -L. So those worlds were, were rebellious people. It's the only way I can figure it out. You know, but it uh, really have this W-O-R-R-E-L-L -L world translation of the Bible. And, and I told her, and she, she went, really? I said, yeah. Two weeks later, she came in here for church, and she handed it to me. She went and bought one for me. She found it on the Internet and bought one. So I've actually got it. World translation. So here's the world translation. Only not that world, the rebellious one, me. <laughs> Nicodemus says, how am I, as an old man, what, what, what do I got to do? You say, born again. What do I got to crawl back into my mother's womb and come back out again? That sure sounds stupid. Well, put yourself in his position, and Jesus said to you, but you didn't have a clue. And he says, verily, verily, I say unto you, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. <coughs> what? Born again. Jesus was referring to the second birth, this, where you receive Jesus Christ as Lord. Set. And you receive him by what? Faith. By faith. And it is without faith it is impossible to please him. For he must believe that, that 
God is and a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So Jesus has said, you know, you need to be born again. You need to, you need to fulfill what, why God sent me here. For God so loved the world. Say it with me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever will believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. It's the simplicity of the gospel is in that verse in its totality. For God, God the Father, God the creator of the universe, God the creator of the heavens and the earth, the one that has the power to say with the spoken word and it created. That's why it says in Hebrews that, that we have to by faith we believe that those things which we see were, were made by not that which is visible. But by invisible, by the very power of, of the living God. For God. The one that has, who, who has the power at his discretion when you sin is to throw a lightning bolt at you. And that is how many in this world see God, and that's unfortunately how some in the church sees him too. So if God is really that way, then I walk in my life and I'm walking on eggshells, you know, because I'm afraid that, that I'm going to do something that's going to make a man. And I'm going to make a man and people will strike me dead. If that was true, they ain't one of us that would be here right now. And if I hadn't been struck yet, I'd be doing a whole lot more funerals this week. But God is not that way. For God, who loves the world, the simplicity of the gospel, for God so loved the world. He loved. He loved. I just want you to get the simplicity of the gospel. See, I've, been, I've been through a, a lot of weight here lately, and I just want to get back to the understanding of how much God loves me. And he does. You may, you may have troubles with that sometimes. You know, Kathy always loves me. During a day, she doesn't like me, but she always loves me. You know? Don't you, Kathy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just want to make sure. Man. <laughs> you know, and God always loves you. Yes. Yes. The one who, before the beginning of time, knew that I was going to be born in 1953, and I was going to live my life. My first 20 something years as a total mess. And back before time began, God made the decision that He's going to love me anyways. Why? Because God is love. And you put yourself in this spot that I'm talking about, me, because it hits you. Love me. And back before the beginning of time, God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit had a plan. And that plan was designed by the heavenly designers of all to give the perfect solution to this idiot. But I won't speak of you as that, but I'll speak of me that. Like this idiot. He came up with a perfect solution. Not because he's a great engineer and just really, really enjoys creating this stuff, but because of his love. Before I was even formed in my mother's womb, God knew me. God loved me. And he had a plan for my life. It's love. For God so loved the world. Yeah, I know. He, he loves the planet. And we're going to take care of the planet. <clears throat> but he loves all of his creation in the planet. <laughs> Kathy and I were talking last night. There was a... We're, 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 we're out on a, on, a, on a swing out by the river. And uh, <clears throat> there were bugs out there. Kathy was like, There really aren't that many bugs in heaven. <laughs> and, I, and I said, I 
said, uh, you know, actually, I think they're probably going to be bugs. <laughs> no, we were, we were getting into bed. I said, no, I think, I think there's going to be mosquitoes up there. Maybe black bombs. <laughs> there's going to there's gonna be, there's gonna be ticks. Because they're, they're all God's creation. And I don't think they're all going to be there. But they're going to be there in that perfect state before sin corrupted everything. Before mosquitoes decided that they were going to fight me. And before ticks decided that they were going to climb on me and fight me. And before black flies would, were, were, would get in, in, their, in their mind, if they had one, to get in my ear. You know, everything black fly in the ear. <laughs> Boy, I tell you, it'll make you go cross eyed. This little tiny bug will make you go cross eyed. <clears throat> but see, in heaven, everything's going to be perfect again. Or is now. For God so loved the world that He is going to bring all of His creation. Back to that perfect state was when it was created in the garden and the garden of Eden was planted in the world. I believe that. But beyond that in his love is when it says that in for God so loved the world, he loved every person in the world, no matter who we are, no matter where we live. His love is the same. His love is the same strength for the aborigine as it is for me. The God that, that uh, the, 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 uh, the, the people in the Philippines serve is the same God that we serve here, same one. And his love for the Filipinos is the same as for an American. And American Filipinos, too. He loves us all. The same. For God so loved the world that he gave. He gave. He gave. And he gave. If you ever think, that God hasn't met your need. You need to look at the cross because at that cross you met every need you have. Every need. Paul said whether I abound or base, I will be content in all things. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He gave his only son. He gave the best he had to give. He reserved, please understand, he reserved nothing for you. From you. He didn't hold back anything from you. He gave the best he had, and the best he had was his son. <clears throat> I cannot imagine what it would be like to watch my son or my daughter be annihilated like Jesus was in that course of a long stretch of time and I'd just stand back and have to watch it and not do anything about it. And yet God in all of his love for you, Jesus for all his love for you, went through that. The father went through watching his son being brutally uh, 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 tortured and, and, and executed in a slow, methodical, horrible way. And God the father watched it happen. All the angels of heaven watched it happen and did not lift a finger to make sure that it still came to completion because that's the only way that you and I could be saved. That was the only way that God could express his love for you. And it angers me when I hear other ministries talk about there's other ways to get to God. Oh yes, you can get to God through Jesus, but you can get to God in all these other ways too. No, you can't. When we say that, when people say that, when people of the church say that, what they do is they're taking that very work of the cross that costs so much and so dearly and the pain and the blood and it cheapens it and it makes it as of, of no reason whatsoever. Because if there's other ways to get to God, there was no reason for Jesus to do what he did. And he is the only. Hmm? They must have used that question. He is the only. Way to God. And that is narrow-minded. But God's the one who, who set it up. And if he wants to be narrow-minded, that's fine with me. He has given me a way where there is no way. He has paid the price for my sins where I could not pay them myself. Where God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So that whoever would believe in him. You know that this morning. Your name is in the Bible. Your name is right there in John 3.16. Your name is whoever. Can you say that this morning? I'm a whoever. I'm a whoever. James Matthew, whoever world. It's good with me. You're a whoever. That's your name. Nobody... With that word, whoever, nobody's left out. Nobody is left out. Everybody has an opportunity.
opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as Lord. This is the simplicity of the gospel. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever would believe in him. And the word believe in in the Hebrew is not just a belief that he exists. Well, why believe in God? Yeah, well, the demons believe and they shudder. Where are they spending eternity? See, believing in that there's a God is not enough. Receiving God is enough. And it's only that. I don't receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and do a whole bunch of stuff in order to get his, his, uh, his, uh, his to, to bring pleasure to him, to, to, to him to be pleased with me. He's pleased with me when I receive him as Lord and Savior. That doesn't mean that I don't fulfill my calling. It doesn't mean that we don't do things that we know that God is pleased with. But we don't do them to earn his approval. When I receive Jesus Christ as Lord, the Bible says that my name is written down in the Lamb's book of life. I have his approval. I don't have to do anything else to get his approval. I have it. Now what I do in my life is to try and express my joy in him. What Peter says, that joy that is inexpressible and full of glory. Hallelujah. I get to do these things. I don't have to do them so that God will be pleased with me. He doesn't hit me with a lightning bolt. I'll pass through judgment into eternal life when I receive Christ as Lord. I don't have to worry about God's judgment. And I stand in these services that I've been doing the last couple of weeks and really been doing my whole life and uh, in ministry at, uh, uh, for funerals and, and uh, I, I guess I must do it really good because people keep calling me. You know, and, and, and there's times when I'm, I'm afraid to answer the phone. And I stand in front of these people and I tell them how much Jesus loves them. And I've shared with them in these services just the same things I've shared with you in the same way. In hopes that there's going to be at least one that will receive from this Lord. See, the simplicity of the gospel, the fact that salvation is really, really not difficult, is the thing that spurs me on to keep doing what I'm doing. It hopes that perhaps I can spur you on to be the ambassador God has called you to be, to share the joy that you have in the Lord with others. To be able to pray with others. Last night when we were over at the, the uh, visiting uh, time for, for Joe Wood over at the funeral home, and as we were leaving, the Kathy, Kathy's ears are sharp. I mean, she can hear a pin drop four rooms away. And, and I'm definitely a doorknob. So we're walking out, and all of a sudden, you know, Kathy right by my son, all of a sudden, I realized, where'd she go? She's back over here, talking to a guy. She heard the guy say, which I thought was kind of funny because she hears so well and she missed it. She thought she heard him say, I just lost my wife 10 minutes ago. He said it. What, what? He said it, but he, he did say that. Okay. And, and just, you know, this is outside of the funeral home. And it just, Kathy just stopped, stopped right in her tracks, and she came right over to him. But never met him before. And she said, excuse me, sir, but did you just say you lost your wife 10 minutes ago? And he goes, oh, no, 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 no. I, I lost her 10 months ago. But you still see it's here in the dark. And Kathy just looked at him and said, can we pray for you? And he was like, yeah. So he was right there. Laid hands on him. Join hands with him and pray for him. And I did notice, you know, do you ever do this when you pray for somebody and you go like this? You just take a peek at them, see what they're doing? I'm guilty, I do that, okay? And the guy is like, I don't know whether he was looking around to see if God was going to show up or what. But the point is that we prayed for him. We took the opportunity. I want to challenge you to look for the opportunity to share the simplicity of the gospel with other people. 
Because that's how God wants the church to grow. New believers. He wants the power of the, of, of the resurrected Jesus that came through the work of the cross to flow through his people to others that don't know him. Amen? Yeah, amen. Hey, wherever we go. And mostly, mostly it's, it's, it's Kathy. Kathy's the one I realized not with me. She's the one that they keep hears of. But it's just, we ask God, please, wherever we go, Give us discernment as to how we can share you with children <coughs> with somebody today. The simplicity of the gospel, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever would believe in him will not perish but have everlasting life. It's a simple message this morning. I don't have anything more to share than that. I just... The last couple of weeks, whenever I've gone into the Word and, and prayer, uh, it's just been the simplicity of the gospel. Keep it simple. Look at John 3.16. Look at Hebrews chapter 1, 1 through 6. You know, verse 5 of Hebrews chapter 1, it says that Enoch was there, and he was, he was no more. But he was taken up, taken away. Why? If Enoch leads to God. There's not much written in the scriptures about Enoch. That particular, there's several Enochs in the scriptures. That particular one, not much is written. Except for this. He pleased God. What would you want on your tombstone? What would you, now, I, I know for, for years I've always, you know, like, well, I was like this, well, I look like that. But right now what I would like, he pleased God. So I just pleased him. Why? Because I want it to be seen by God. I want to be seen by you too, but I want to see by I want to be seen by God as just simply a man of simple faith. God said it, I believe it. That's settled. So. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Father, for your blessing of your uh, purpose in our lives. I thank you for the simplicity of the gospel. Father. I pray, Lord, under this was <clears throat> just a simple message this morning. But it is so profound in its truth. Cemented in our hearts. Forgive us if we have ever been guilty of trying to formulate you into this God that fits our needs rather than allowing you to circumcise our hearts. And I thank you for that, Lord. We pray, Father, for the Woods family, the Winchester family. Father, that your grace, which is sufficient, will fulfill all of their need at this time. We pray for Iva, that you will comfort her. As your word tells us, you will comfort, you will be a husband to the widow. To the widow. And Lord, that uh, she would just draw close to you. And we thank you for that. I pray, Father, that in that service this afternoon, that there will be salvation. That there will be ones who will receive you as Lord and Savior. And I thank you for that. We put it into your hands in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Now there's one more thing I want to do. No, don't get up. We've no. still got another commercial. Um, Nick and Katie Webb, through a lot of prayer and seeking God, see, they both have roots here, and they believe that the Lord has uh, instructed them to return to their home church, Grace Christian Fellowship. So we welcome them back with open arms. And, uh, Nick is leaving in two weeks. All right. You won't be here next week because you guys are going over to Agave, right? right. Nick has, uh, was asked by Pastor Michael Gant to be a part of the ministry team uh, going over to Kenny to, uh, to the, uh, the school over there that uh, Michael had uh, uh, helped to build. And we've, we've helped it with our offerings and as part of our mission budget. <clears throat> and uh, So anyways, Mike asked 
Nick is Nick is his expertise is in uh, solar uh, solar panels and solar systems. And he asked Nick if he would come over to um, help us assist in possibly uh, turning the the school into a, a more um, self-sustaining. Self -sustaining. Thank you. Yeah, I guess talk on that word um, through through using uh, solar panels. And Nick has agreed to go. And uh, uh, I have a feeling that uh, Pastor Mike's going to be using Nick for more than just that when he's over there with uh, Nick's testimony. This church put Nick through uh, Teen Challenge back a few years ago, in which we uh, uh, are still honored that we did. But I wanted Nick and, and Katie, if you would come up here. And what we're going to do is we're going to just pray for them, pray for safety, pray for Grace for Katie because she's home with the kids and, and Nick's going to be gone for how long? Two weeks. Two weeks, Two weeks three kids alone. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So if you would like to stand and just stretch your hands out to this couple. And I'm going to pray, but I'm going to ask if, if you would pray as well. Right. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for first off, for the fact that Nick and Katie love you. Yes. And they have dedicated their lives to serve you. Yes. And Lord, that they together agree, that they have heard you clearly, that here is where they are to be as their home church. And we welcome them with, with open arms and open hearts. And Lord, we pray, Father, for Nick yes. as he goes to Kenya with that uh, ministry team with Pastor Michael. Lord, that you will use him in the expertise of his field of solar systems, but even more so, Lord. Solar systems are powered by the sun. Our lives are to be powered by the Son of God, by the Holy power of the Holy Spirit, and that that power will be released in Nick and the whole team over there. And we thank you for that, Lord. We expect that there's going to be uh, a, a great testimony of how you moved over there where people were saved, where people were even physically healed. And maybe even uh, in that blind school that we, uh, ears that will be opened up. Father, in Jesus' name, use Nick, use Pastor Mike, use that whole team. And Father, we pray for Kate. Lord, as she is, uh, was in full agreement for her husband to go, knowing that, that she has to be home with three children alone for the whole two weeks. Your grace is sufficient. And you will meet the needs that she has with the children and with the emptiness of her husband being gone for two weeks. Father, do your work. Anybody else wants to pray for with our blessings. Yes. Katie will be home with our blessings. Yes. And Lord, 
there's even more to the story. You're going to do a work in this couple yes. that's even deeper than a missionary trip. Yes. Lord, I pray that they will have the discernment as to what it is yes. and let you do that work. In yes. Jesus' name. And all God's people said? Amen. 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 May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his countenance shine upon you, be gracious unto you, and may he give you peace. <laughs> Okay, we're going to go in with her uncle.